So this morning, I thought we'd take a look at this here wood splitter that is meant for my excavator. So what we have is a uh, attachment that goes to a two inch receiver and just two inch square stock steel welded directly to the I-beam of the wood splitter. Pretty simple design. We just found an old, old broken down wood splitter and pulled the engine and uh, valve body off of it and actually sold it and then grabbed some fittings for the thumb hydraulics off the excavator. It's a pretty big hydraulic piston. Got an extra axe head welded on there and for the bigger stuff. Here's the, the coupling, just it's a Harbor Freight, uh, Harbor Freight two inch receiver. Make it to a uh, quick, quick and rough coupling that fits our Volvo. The idea behind this thing was, uh, you know, to try to keep the motors down on the property and let the excavator hydraulics do a lot of the work. Okay, pull this down. It snaps out. If you've ever hooked up uh, hydraulic hoses, what you need to do at least on this machine, to relieve the hydraulics is shut the machine off, turn it to accessory with the lever down, and uh, just relieve the pressure to the hydraulics. And they should clip right in once you do that. Your thumb auxiliary hydraulics. Simply just go into the input and output of this uh, hydraulic piston. What I like about this idea is you can take the machine to the tree in the woods rather than uh, dice it up and then move it to a flat area. It's pretty challenging on a slope to run it from in there, uh, you get better at it. Let's go let this thing warm up and get the hydraulics in there. Make sure it's working. Yep, we're working. All right, idle. This splitter works pretty darn good. Uh, it'll split just about anything uh, when throttled up speeds up a little bit. You can see the 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 thumb is back or the the toggle switch is backwards but that's yeah, just a hydraulic hose swap. We initially built it the other direction but we found out that uh, you can actually if you pivot it over like this you can curl it over and uh, actually run it like a traditional wood splitter and reach the toggle switch. And I guess the nice part about it is uh, split the bigger rounds without lifting them up in place. So we're just gonna hook this uh, little firewood cart or uh, the excavator cart up here. 
made that a while back. Works a treat, holds about a yard of soil. Uh, this hitch is up to a pencil hitch. I recommend if you ever get an excavator, uh, torch out a section of the blade and weld in a two inch receiver. Uh, I'm sure one could argue the wheel motors don't like pulling a trailer, but I mean, you can push dirt with a blade. Haven't had an issue with it yet. And it has a ton of power. It can easily pull over the weight of the machine. We're heading down into some steep terrain here. So what we have here is a red oak, a windblown red oak. I think about two years ago it came down. I think in this case, because I'm on pretty steep ground, I'm just going to split one time into the trailer and then head up to where I'm going to stack the wood and finish there. Yeah, you can see those rounds are a good size. They're maybe 18 inches, so far better than going in there and uh, loading them full size into the trailer. Pretty great that it could just split red oak sideways. This machine, uh, in theory is about 11, 11 gallons a minute on the hydraulics. Um, I wasn't, I'm not too sure what the auxiliary hydraulics are, but it seems plenty to run the splitter. frozen on the ground, huh? It's gonna be tricky to get the machine in there. You can see this situation is pretty challenging and it's really steep right here uh, and we're doing it. safety purposes. Okay. Yikes. 
see if we can find traction here. Love this little cart. Success. Can you, you know, sit and split, but you can, with this particular configuration, you can flip it over and uh, use it as a regular splitter. I have control, not recommended to do this by the way, but I have control with the toggle switch just standing here. easy enough just to be a regular old splitter. Draw it up a bit, get a bit more speed. And it goes through this red oak like nothing. And I just drove the wood splitter right up to where we're gonna stack. That's that's the part I like is we're touching it as little as possible. Uh, and you know, have a pretty simple setup to I've been using these uh, firewood bags lately. Uh, these are a sixth of a cord per bag. They make them into a face cord as well, a third of a cord. They've been really nice. They have these four, four straps. Uh, you could hook it right to the teeth, the teeth of the excavator on the bucket. They're vented. So they, I haven't gone through a whole season yet of drying. Once these are full, uh, you can you can cover them and just kind of leave them wherever, and come back later and pick them up. It seems like a really good workflow for firewood. Another thing is I I I, tr I really like to use the whole tree, and I'm not a big fan of making kindling, so. These are a good way to actually cut up all the branches and have them somewhere easy to store. Got some power.
and uh, you know the nice part is is we we hit them down there once or twice and they're not so dang heavy to lift onto the splitter and at the same time drove them up into place the nice part about running this off of the excavator as well is there's not a another carburetor to get gummed up another engine to take care of uh, and yeah you're putting hours on an excavator which might be not the best but uh done this a few seasons and it still only has 1620 hours on it so this doesn't take too long do a couple quart a year certainly beats splitting it with a mall <laughs> <laughs> 